Now, if uh, Jesus is God, then why did he not know when he would return? Mm -hmm. You see, speaking of his second coming, Jesus said in uh, Matthew 24, let me just uh, go there. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Jesus is saying he doesn't know the day or the hour. The Bible clearly teaches that God, Jesus is God. You see, there's a, Jesus is God, is a member of the Trinity. And it teaches even clearly about that. Let's see John, John 1 verses 1. See what the Bible teaches. It says, in the beginning was the word. You see, word is capitalized, meaning what? Word is that Jesus. And the word was with God and the word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Okay? The same was in the beginning with God. And when you see verse 14, what does it say? <clears throat> and the word was made flesh. So this word which was made flesh, it was Jesus. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory for the glory of the only begotten, uh, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. So Jesus is God. Okay? Jesus is God, the Father, God, the Holy Spirit, God. They are, the three are one. Okay, so now how 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 can we how can God not know the day or the hour when He'll be coming? And we know that God is omniscient, all knowing. So it seems strange that Jesus would say that He did not know when He would return. But you know, the key to understanding Jesus' seeming lack of knowledge in this matter lies in the nature. Of his incarnation the man Jesus he was incarnated he was in you know he was in a manly form this is the key to understanding why Jesus did not know the day or the hour when he'll be coming because he was in the nature of man when the Son of God became man he remained fully God remember that but he also took the nature of a true human a being Jesus retained all the attributes of the divinity all these attributes, he had them, but he was still a man. He voluntarily restricted the use of his, you know, divine nature. This was part of the self-emptying or self-renunciation uh, spoken of in the Bible, in the in, in the Philippians 2.6. Okay, when Jesus entered the world, he lay aside the privileges that had been uh, he is in heaven. Okay, let's see Philippians 2 6 Philippians 2 verse 6 He laid every privilege who being in the form of God thought it not robbery to be equal with God But made himself of no reputation and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. You see, Jesus being God, he knows everything. But he humbled himself to a point that he was just like a, you see, a man. And all the attributes of him being God, he restricted them by his own will. Rather than just, uh, uh, rather than just uh, Jesus staying uh, on his throne in heaven. Jesus made himself nothing. The Bible tells us he made himself purely nothing so that he could be able to save us. Je Jesus made himself of no reputation. He made himself nothing and took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of man. Are you seeing this? When he came to earth, he gave up his divine privileges. He veiled his glory and he chose to occupy the position of a servant. Now, there were times when Jesus publicly manifested his divine knowledge and power on earth. This is something we have to understand. Like uh, the, the way the Bible says in uh, John 2.25. John uh, 2, uh, 20, I mean 25. You see, there are times when he manifested, okay, and needed not that any should testify of man, for he knew what was in man you see jesus himself some there are points where he 
he, he, he brought the attributes of, of God in him. He knew when he, he could look at somebody and know, you, you are a man, and I know what you're thinking. That's an attribute of God, okay? There are times when he could, uh, you know, bring in that, and there are times that uh, he did not. We can see also um, uh, John 11.43, okay? John 11.43. Uh, see, another point. And when Lazarus, he that has spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound uh, about with a napkin. Jesus said unto them, Lose him and let him go. So you see, Jesus is raising Nazareth. That's an attribute, a heavenly attribute. But there are times that uh, he did not want to, you know, give himself those attributes. So when Jesus said he did not know when he would return, he was actively humbling himself okay he was just humbling himself and taking the form of a servant the form of a servant okay and this one we have already read in philippians 2 7 to 8 we have already seen how he made himself a servant he he left all the glorious things and uh, he said it's okay it's okay let me be like a man so that I can understand their problems, I can understand how they feel, I can understand everything. Let me not put my attributes of God, being God, on myself. Let me be the man, okay? That's why he always said, the, uh, he called himself the son of man. To attribute him with, his, with, with man, to give himself the nature of man. So that he can feel and, and see and go through the things that human beings go through. So that when he will be saving us, he will be saving us from a point of... You know, you can say, oh, you know, I'm being tempted. Jesus was tempted. You saw uh, th this and this happened. No, Jesus passed through everything that you, you're going through. Are you seeing the point? So since no other mortal knows the time of Jesus' return, no other mortal being, everybody, nobody knows, okay? And Jesus, that information, Jesus portrayed it that it is for the Father only. Because at that moment when Jesus was here, God is the one, God the Father, is the one who had all these attributes still in him. But Jesus had removed those attributes from himself so that he can be a servant. He can be like humans. So that information is the Father's alone. And uh, the Bible says here in Matthew uh, 24, verse 36, 24, 36, see. But of that day knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. He's saying this, that the Father only is the one right now who is having all these divine attributes with him. Him, Jesus, has changed himself and now is fully man, but still he has the, he's still part, part God and part man, but he's now activating the man part of him. Are you seeing the point? So Jesus voluntarily restricted his knowledge on that point. It was part of Jesus' submission to the Father. He submitted to the Father. Okay? Through this, he basically submitted. John 5.30. This was his, his way of showing submission. That now I've, I've made myself fully man so that I can go through all these things which men are going through so that they cannot say that uh, you see you, you are Jesus and uh, that's why you are not passing. No. See, I can of my own self do nothing. You see, he has made himself fully like a man. I can of myself own, my, my, my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. What I'm hearing from the Father is what I'm judging. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which has sent me. Now, he has submitted himself to the will of the Father, making himself as man completely, and removing all his divine attributes so that he can become fully like man and to feel how man feels. And this was something which uh, God really showed so divinely. And uh, you can go and see uh, John 6, 38 and... Um, John 8, 28 to 29 also, talking about his mission to live a human life, okay? Now, you see, the Bible is very clear about this. Obedience, okay? Some things Jesus apparently chose just to give up the rights, 
uh, be privy to uh, during his earthly ministry. He just chose, let, let me be obedient, it's okay. The knowledge, the knowledge of when he would return was one of those things that Jesus uh, gave out the, um, what is it called? He gave out his divine nature. He didn't want to uh, uh, have that divinity so that he can be able to say, oh, this is the day I'll be coming. No, at this time, he was fully behaving and working in his manly nature. That's why, that's why he, he said no one knows the day or the hour because he was in total submission to the Father, okay? The knowledge of when he would return was one of those things. Now, Jesus, right now, is exalted in heaven. Surely, do you think when Jesus is back in heaven, uh -huh, is back in heaven and is back in his, you know, 100% divine nature, do you think surely that uh, he doesn't know the day that he'll be coming? He knows. He knows. And look at the book of Revelation. Revelation. Revelation is talking about the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let me just show you. Revelation 1 verses 1. See what it says here. So that you can know Jesus knows now when the time will be coming. Because he has gone back to his, his divine nature. The revelation of Jesus Christ. So this book is a revelation of Jesus Christ. Which God gave unto him. So God has already revealed unto Jesus Christ. Because now they are one. He is back again to his trinity being. Okay. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to show his servants. Okay, who are his servants? You and me, those who are saved. Things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel. Okay, so God gave Jesus the revelations. Then Jesus gave it to an angel. And then the angel gave to John. You can see this. So what are these revelations? The revelations of his Coming, when he'll be coming back. Now, in his glory. So, Jesus knows the day and the hour when he'll be coming. And no wonder he says in Revelation, Revelation 3, verses 3, see what Jesus says here. He says, remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. The things that you have received back when you're being taught. Remember in Matthew. Remember in all that time. Remember when Paul was teaching you all these things. Remember all those things that you've received and you've heard. And hold them fast and repent. Now look at the next point here. If therefore you shall not watch. Uh -huh, I will come to thee as a thief. And you shall not know what hour I will come upon thee. So he's telling his people watch. If you will not watch, you will not know. What is the opposite of that? If you will watch, my people, then you will know what hour will come upon thee. Because now, it's not about if uh, no man knows the day or the hour. Now I'm back in my throne, and I already know the day and the hour when I'll be coming. And I'm revealing these things for you. And that's why this book is called Revelations. What, what does the word revelation mean? It means things which are revealed, which were hidden. That time he did not know. Now he knows. And this book of Revelation was written way after Jesus has died and rose in, uh, uh, back to heaven. So it means he is revealing the things which he, had, he did not know when he was in manly form. When he was uh, the man, Jesus. Now he has gone back to heaven and he knows back those things. Because he has gotten back his divine nature 100%. He is no longer now the man. But now he is... He's 100%, okay? He's 100% back to his divine nature. Are you seeing this point? So when you hear people say, oh, no man, no, the days or the hour, ask them, which dispensation are you talking about? Which time are you talking about? Because Jesus has already said, and he says that uh, we are his children. We are the children of light. We are children of light. We are not of the darkness. And he will come as a thief to those people who are in darkness. Is the way it is in the darkness. But we are children of the light. Jesus is the light of the world. So we are in him. And he is in us. Now if we are in Jesus, will Jesus not reveal to his children about his coming? Are you seeing the point? Really, really important to understand this. So I just wanted to put that out there. And if you are not saved, please get saved. Get saved. Get saved. Remember what Jesus said here? Remember what you have received and heard and all fast and repent. If you will not watch, 
He'll come to you as a thief and you shall not know what hour will come upon thee. If you don't want him to come to you as a thief, please repent. Repent. The gospel is found in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. It's all about understanding how that Christ died for our sins, he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. When you understand how and why he had to do that, and you confess it to God and you tell him, Jesus, I understand that you died for my sins and you were buried and rose again, as is written in the scriptures, all for me, and I receive that atonement. Then when you tell him that and you confess it out aloud with your mouth, then you're saved. It's not the confessing which saves you, but what saves you is the belief. You're confessing what you know. You can't confess what you don't know. That's really what the gospel is. And then... You be obedient, just like God, Jesus was obedient to his father, knowing that he's God, but he was obedient, laying out his godly attributes to becoming a man. Hope this has been a blessing to you. Hope you've been able to be blessed. Please, you can share the video, you can uh, give it a thumbs up, and also you can give out your comments and thoughts. And if there's any question that you may need uh, uh, me to answer, please just type it down there and ask any question. I'll be willing to do a video on the same and answer. You can also subscribe so that you don't miss any video. God bless you and have a blessed, blessed time.